Hello and welcome aboard the new Riviera 585 SUV. I'm Mark Rothfield for Club Marine TV and today I'll walk you through the many luxurious features of this stunning motor yacht. There are three staterooms, two dining areas and one stunning single level saloon. So stay tuned. We're joined by Stephen Milne, Brand and Communications Director at Riviera Australia. And Stephen, firstly, congratulations on this new release. Understand it was one of the smash hits at its global premiere. Uh, yes, Mark, thank you very much and welcome aboard. The reaction from the boat show was just overwhelming. The praise, the admiration for everything this boat has to offer. Of course, it's replacing a classic in the 575 SUV. How do you position the boat in that SUV collection. The 575, if you can compare that with this 585, that truly shows the evolution of what Riviera is all about. The boats are similar sizes, but the design, the technology, the amenity and, and the layout has changed and evolved considerably. So if you look at our SUV line now, there's nice increment steps that allow people to be able to move through the range as their lifestyle permits them to do so. So we wanted to bridge that gap between the 505 and the 645 and the 585 does all of that. It's got more space than the 505 and it's got a different layout to the 645. So every boat is different with its layout and its personality. Mark, we're really looking forward to showing you around today. Picking your favourite Riviera is like choosing your favourite child sometimes, but I honestly think this is one of the best saloons I have ever seen. The moment you walk in, you're embraced by the amount of space there is. Huge windows affording lots of light and great views throughout. The layout works really well. In this case, the galley is on the port side. Often you find it near the awning window, but here you've got a pantograph door to the side, so it flows through really well. Every inch of space is utilised. That allows the starboard side to be devoted to lounging. In this case, this beautiful settee can convert to a dining arrangement. Immediately forward is the lounge that you will gravitate to when the boat is underway. You can sit forward, you're right next to the helm, and you'll be part of the action. Often find in Rivieras that the galley is to port, serving through that awning window. In this case, you get your freezers, you also get a television, and it's still close enough to the main galley for meals to be passed out. This is truly one of the most remarkable full beam master suites I've ever seen on any boat this length. So much headroom in here, perfectly flat floor throughout, beautifully carpeted, an amazing amount of light and airiness. You've got these fantastic windows that not only let in light, but give you this beautiful view of the water. Storage everywhere, up top in cabinets. To port, you have a two seater table, so a great little spot for coffee in the morning, you can sit there and work, maybe even a jewellery table. Another option is a little mini bar where you can have your coffee machine, fridge underneath. So the owner will be absolutely spoiled. This is the ensuite for the master suite and it has the five star finish you'd expect. It's also really easy to clean and maintain. It's positioned to the starboard side, slightly forward. On the other side of this wall is the day head, which very cleverly centralizes all the plumbing. There is a third bathroom for the VIP cabin. What would often be the master suite on many boats is the VIP cabin in this case, in the bow. But again, that theme of lots of headroom, flat floor continues. You'd be very, very comfortable down here. The timber is satin oak in this case, which I really love. Lots of grain and it's all timber match. You could also choose cherry or walnut with either satin or gloss varnish. The port side guest cabin has this lovely hanging locker. Light comes on as soon as you open the door and it is equipped with twin singles. In this case, full length, so adults can comfortably sleep. And if you wanna get just that little bit closer, at the push of a button, they form a double.
this is a fantastic space immediately aft of the master stateroom. In this case, it's set up as a dedicated laundry that puts mine at home to shame. It has a linen cabinet, everything you'd need down here, including a sink. It can also be fitted as a crew cabin. Very rarely do you need that on a boat this length, but this becomes a full bed, and you can also have a shower head compartment here. It can also be a utility room. Now that's your choice, it could be for fishing, scuba, set it up as a gym, whatever you want. There are two access points to the engine room. One is through a cockpit hatch in the mezzanine level. The other is through this door. I'd have to say, wow, if you own any other kind of boat, that's not an engine room, this is an engine room. Great servicing access to everything, beautifully engineered, like world-class standards. The test boat is equipped with a 27 kilowatt own and jet set. It and the twin 1,000 horsepower IPS motors are fed by 4,500 litres of fuel, which gives the boat exceptional range. In this case, you have twin 750 litre wing tanks. There's also a 3,000 litre fuel tank under floor, slightly further forward. Water capacity is 800 litres, split between two 400 litre tanks. That's self-level. I'd be recommending the water maker that's also fitted in this case, so you can fill those tanks very quickly and enjoy long showers. In terms of black water, there's a 500 litre tank further forward. We've got the label AC board, you've got the C-zone fuse panel, and down here, the battery switches. This is the port servo unit for the Humphrey fin stabilizers. They're fitted in lieu of a gyroscope. Really compact and also low power draw. The Alfresco deck is one of the great features of the SUV range and also the sports motor yacht. It effectively increases the saloon area by 30% and gives you this semi-protection with some of the best views in the house. This would be dining room central, as the name suggests. Very comfortable arrangement. You can fold the table leaf down and sit at least six people comfortably. Bring an ottoman out here. On the port side is a settee that can convert into a day bed. The perfect place to read your copy of Club Marine magazine. For all weather boating, you can enclose this area with clears or breezeway screens as we have now. Really complementing that alfresco deck is this all action cockpit. Measures 8.5 square metres and it really makes full use of the 5.67 metre beam. Has plenty of space to launch your SUPS, comes with a host of fishing options as well as those big boat items you'd expect. Refrigeration, barbecues, really impressed by the stainless steel. It's super yacht quality, all manufactured in Australia. This cockpit flows at a single level out to the swim platform. Now, there's an optional extra to have the larger platform. I would be ticking that option box. It increases boat length to 65 feet. You can enclose it with railings. You can launch your tender or make it a beach party when you're swimming. Terrific feature. The only thing missing from this foredeck area is a nice margarita or perhaps a lime and soda. Otherwise, it is perfect for entertaining. Huge wraparound lounges and also a settee that converts into this nice day bed. Similar arrangement is seen on the 645, but I really think it works well here. You have great access through the boat. You're never stepping on cushions. Cover it with a Euro awning and you'll be spending lots of time out here. What a beautiful boat the 585 SUV really is. There is luxury everywhere you look and it is the finest of Australian manufacturing. Pricing starts at $3.35 million and you don't just buy a boat, you become part of the Riviera family. Until then, Mark Rothfield, Club Marine TV. See you next time.